Hey everyone, we have arrived in the beautiful country of Portugal. Today we're going to share with you how we spent one perfect day in the lovely city of Porto. Porto with probably the best pastry I've ever had. So it was a yummy Portuguese croissant and it was filled with like a yummy egg custard. And we had that as well as a pastel de nata and a delicious coffee. We had ours at Confeitaria Sao Domingos. Awesome place. So after coffee, we walked up the beautiful pedestrian mall of Rua das Flores and it empties out at the train station, Sao Bento. Now normally you wouldn't go to a train station unless you're catching a train or arriving by train, but this one is worth popping into even for a few minutes. It has beautiful mosaics and beautiful tiles from floor to ceiling essentially that tell some of the history of Porto. After we were done checking out the tiles in the train station, we took a short little walk over to the uh, cathedral or the Se. It's pretty big, it's quite grand, but it has a very sort of cold, austere feel feeling to it. However, when you go inside and check out the cloister area, it's Beautiful. completely worth it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of this neat combination of uh, big stone uh, arches and walkways with more of those beautiful blue and white azulejo tiles. Okay, from the cathedral, it's only a few steps away to one of the most iconic things in Porto, and that is the Luis I Bridge. The bridge was designed by one of Gustav Eiffel's protégés, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it, it's from the same era, it has the same feel, and it's really cool. So when we were all done checking things out on the bridge, we wanted to take a look at the older medieval neighborhood in Porto, so check that out. There's a lot of um, really old buildings. Some of them are still quite run down. Some are totally being revamped and renovated yeah. and made into new spaces. There's a lot of these really narrow streets uh, and narrow walkways and places to check out. It's just a really cool part of town. Okay, so once we got down to the water, we were pretty hungry. Mm, starving. A lot of walking, a lot of uh, looking at old stuff. Yes. It does create a hunger. So the water is a perfect place to, uh, to grab a bite to eat. There are a ton of restaurants. We don't recommend any in particular. Um, we just found one because there was a nice table available and we had a nice lunch there. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful glass of rosé port by the river for lunch, with lunch, and it was like one of the best glasses of wine I've maybe ever had. So once we were fed, had a drink, we were feeling a little bit rested, had some nice time by the water, and the next thing we did was we visited the Se Sao Francisco, or the Church of St. Francis, and that's a very unique, very cool church. It is completely stone on the outside. It does not look like much. Um, it looks kind of scary a little bit, very sort of, austere like the other church as well. Dark and um, foreboding. Very dark and foreboding, thank you. Um, but then you go inside into the cathedral portion of it and it's just gorgeous. Yeah. It's filled with all of this intricate wood carving work. Yes. And all of that wood is covered in gold leaf. Mm -hmm. So it's just like kilograms of gold leaf in there. It's sparkling and it's beautiful and it feels warm and inviting yes. and like just really comforting to be inside there. I actually didn't really want to leave. This was definitely one of the most unique churches I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just another church. No. Or it wasn't just another cathedral. It was uh, kind of mind-blowing in its own way. Definitely worth it. There's also a small museum and a catacombs. catacombs. So um, if you're into kind of morbid stuff, head down to the catacombs. So right beside the church is another great site, and that's the Palacio de Bolsa, or the Stock Exchange Palace. Mm -hmm. With your admission, you have to go on a guided tour. It's a 40-minute guided tour. It's pretty interesting. Uh, you learn a little bit about the history of that building and a little bit about the history of Portugal, too. But there's one room in particular, the Arab Room, that I think is worth seeing. The guide calls it the most beautiful room in all of Portugal. Mm -hmm. It was basically inspired by the Alhambra, and it's built in that Moorish style. So those beautiful mosaics, those beautiful 
geometric patterns. Uh, it really is a sight to see. So the last site that we checked out was kind of a spontaneous decision in our day. Um, we heard about this bookshop in Porto, Livraria Lelo, which is apparently the most beautiful bookshop in the world. It has mm -hmm. been quoted as being, so we decided we needed to check that out. We are book lovers, literature lovers. It's five euros to get in and visit the bookstore. It's not very big, so it's kind of cramped in there. Yeah. Um, but it is gorgeous. And if you find something there that you want to buy, you do get five euros back. It's apparently one of the places that inspired J.K. Rowling, the author, to write the Harry Potter book. Okay, with our sightseeing done, it was definitely time to eat again. We love tapas, so we found this place called Tapas 65. Very modern uh, restaurant and it has a modern take on tapas. The dishes there were awesome. So good. Some of the best eating, I think, that we had in Portugal. It was food so nice, we went there twice. Absolutely, we did. Um, so another option, and one thing that we definitely enjoyed doing was we headed over to uh, the Majestic Cafe, which is a perfect place to cap off your evening with a cup of coffee, a tea, or what we decided to do, which was to have a little bit of dessert and a drink, a beverage, a yes. nightcap, if you will. So it's like a, it's like a grand cafe in the old Parisian mm -hmm. style, I would say. Yep. What makes it a little interesting is that it's another place that J.K. Rowling used to go. Yes to work on the Harry Potter books. So it also has that kind of charm to it. Well, that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you so much for tagging along on our lovely day in Porto. If you have other ideas for things to do here in this city, please let us know in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. See you soon.